My brother Earl was a rapper. He was an aspiring rapper. He was definitely an artist. He was a family guy. He had a way of being the the families and his friends, um, the peacemaker. He wanted to help other people see a different perspective. In 1999, there was a murder of a police officer that happened uh, in the city of Orange. And I remember after the, um, the murder of the police officer, there was like a sort of like a manhunt going on for her killer. Three or four days later, my brother had uh, come up missing. Um, the next day, it was a school day for me, so I remember going to school. It was a very weird morning, um, but I remember going to school, and then while I was in school, I had my mom come to the school, but when I got downstairs to see, you know, my mom crying, I saw that, um, or she told me that my brother had been killed. They stated that he had held the cab, and then shortly after he held the cab, his cab was pulled over. They uh, pulled over the, the cab. Apparently, they said my brother resembled the sketch of the person who had killed the police officer. The reports were that um, less than an hour from the time that my brother was um, you know, taken under police custody, um, they said he died. One of the things that they kept saying was that uh, my brother was brought through the back door of this police precinct. Police officers were taking their turns with beating him up in the stairwell. Allegedly, and, and it came out in the, um, the case as well, that police officers had taken pepper spray and sprayed it down his throat. As we were experiencing the trial, right, um, we were getting more and more information that we ever heard. So from the very beginning, they only said that um, he died from an asthma attack. They never said anything about him being beaten. When my dad and my brother went to go and view my brother's body at the morgue, they had seen that he had been badly beaten. This happened 21 years ago. However, which with each case, you know, we are reliving it. And at the time when it happened with my brother, you know, as I mentioned before, there were no cell phones. There were no, nothing where people can videotape it and it can spread as rapidly as how, you know, the instance with Mr. George Floyd. Justice has to be served no matter what. And I feel like right now, everything is coming to a head because it has to. There must be law and order. It has to first start within our leadership. If our leadership has been built on a faulty, you know, unjust police system, then there has to be, I don't even know if it's a reform. Maybe it's reform, maybe it's something different, but it has to be reinvented and they ha we have to be honest. We have to be truthful toward what ha what's actually going on in the world. He did change the world. Unfortunately, you know, he died the way that he died, but he did change the world because he, he has a sister and he has family who fight for him. And we still hold his name alive and we still do things to keep him very much so, you know, alive.